surrounding me. Drop one dead weight around, you'll see. Sharpen my knife just to watch you bleed. All my enemies hey, surrounding me. What is good with y'all boys? It's boy AP. We come back with another video. Today I'm going to show y'all a more in-depth tutorial of how to get the little Dirk slash Rod Wave guitar leads out of contact. But um, this is my most anticipated video. I know I haven't uploaded in a long time. I've been trying to get y'all uh, videos out. Nigga be busy for real. So uh, make sure y'all follow me on Instagram. That's where I be uh, mostly at. I be going live sometimes. But right now they be having me being so... I'm going to try to go live more on YouTube and more on Twitch. But make sure y'all follow me. I'm going to drop a free kit when I hit 6K on Instagram and when I hit 2K on uh, YouTube. So I should hit 2K off of this video and then hopefully 6K on the ground. I'm not that far off. Make sure y'all follow me. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. We finna hop straight into it. Alright, so first things first. We going to uh, play this loop. I just made like a quick little Dirk loop. I'm not really using this for real, but... um. I just made like a quick little dark loop. It got like 10 layers in it. And then I'm going to show y'all my lead and how I uh, do it with the effects, what lead I'll be using and stuff like that. So this is the loop. Alright, so it's pretty simple. So... First thing, what you want to do, I'm going to go through step by step. I'm going to close out this contact, first of all. I'm going to load in contact. And then what you want to do is you want to click this little settings button at the top left hand corner of your contact. Then go to pitch over here. Turn that mud to like 20, right? And you right click on the pitch wheel at the top. Then you hit link to controller. And what you want to do on your MIDI controller, you want to move the pitch spin wheel. And then it'll connect to your controller. So, I'm going to go into Evolution Infinity. And I'm going to load up a guitar. And everything is simple. I got this piano down here at the bottom of contact with the pitch spin wheel right here to show you guys what I'll be doing. <clears throat> so, um, I'm going to use Tap Faster Lead for this video. This is one of my favorite leads I use. I'm going to rename it Guitar Lead. And I'm going to link that to the mixer. Boom. So it's in the mixer now. Alright, so first things first, what I be doing with my leads. Everything is simple. I don't use Guitar Rig. I don't use none of that extra stuff. So I'm going to go to Valhalla Vintage Verb. I'm going to turn it down to like... Starting off, like when I start playing it and recording it, I usually go around like 25 to 30 percent on the mix, and then I turn the low cut all the way up. I leave the decay where it's at. Sometimes I'll turn it down to like right there, but I'm gonna leave it where it's at for right now. Then I always add Valhalla delay, and then over here in the FL mix level, I turn it down about like right there. Then I add fruity delay, and put the time knob to the middle. Turn the mix level down about like right there. Grab EQ. Bring this down. And that's it. Like literally that's my effects right there. And I keep it very simple. Sometimes I might add a flanger or flanger, whatever you want to call it. And then turn the mix level down to probably like right there. But I'm not doing all that right now. So we finna see how it sounds right now. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. Right here, you can see my pitch spin wheel moving right here. And this is what I'm doing with my thumb on the MIDI. Y'all won't be, be able to see me because I'm playing it over there on my MIDI board. But look at what I'm playing right here. And then look at how I'm moving the uh, pitch spin wheel. And this takes practice. Everybody keeps hitting my DM saying, how do you get so good at doing the pitch spins, bruh? It takes practice. When I first started, I was trash at pitch spins. Like, I wasn't even good. So you're going to have to practice playing over the loops not recording but like just playing around freestyling your skills that's another thing learn your skills so you can learn what to play when to play it how to play it and then like on dirk melodies you use i'm gonna use the number system for example and the number system is like number on each note on the scale so like that's one two three four five you, you get what i'm saying one two three four five so usually it ends on the six, which is this right here. Two, three, four, five, six. 
that's what dirk melodies usually start and end on so it, you gotta like uh experience it and listen to music and learn how to play it and learn your scales to really know what i'm saying but usually dirk melodies end on the sixth note in the scale basically what i'm saying and i'm playing in the major scale right there so um and another thing you can learn is when you're playing in the major scale or the minor scale the major six is the minor one you get what i'm saying so it's two different scales so that's minor this is major you know what i'm saying so you gotta learn different uh music theory if you really want to get in depth with scales and all that but when it comes to just playing your uh leads and stuff just i use the major scale and uh yeah Make sure you got your pitch uh, range to 20%. Link it to your controller. Load up your guitar. Put these effects on it. And then just practice your scales with the metronome. And I'm going to show you me playing so you guys can understand what I'm saying right here. So pay attention to the pitch bend wheel and what I'm playing right here. Uh, let me get that joint started. Basically, all I was doing right there was just freestyling. I wouldn't like record any of that, but just freestyling basically in that major scale and using that pitch bend wheel and going like this. Like, it's just moving your finger super fast up and down. Like, you got to practice that movement. So, some people I hear don't even use the pitch bend wheel sometimes with these guitars, and you always want to use the pitch bend wheel. It just makes it sound way more realistic because if you're not going to do that, you might as well just get a real guitar player to do it for you. And that creates the vibrato sound of the guitar. So, um, I noticed that this guitar needs a little bit more reverb. And usually when I do my guitars, I turn the reverb up at the end to make it sound complete with the whole loop and make it sound as one instead of just sitting the guitar on top of the loop. It needs to be connected, if that makes sense. So, I'm finna record a melody and I'm gonna show you me recording it so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then we gonna play the loop and I'm gonna show you guys how I arrange my loop and then that's gonna be the end of the video because this quick a quick tutorial it really doesn't take all that when recording guitar but everybody seems to be confused I don't know why you just pick your favorite guitars out of contact with evolution jazz arc top strawberry infinity all that and then you just put I use the same effects every time we Re reverb EQ and delay that's all I use so it's nothing to it um but i'm gonna record this loop and then i'm gonna show you guys what i do all right so i have this basic super basic guitar melody recorded and i'm gonna show you guys what i play it right here I just recorded something simple and then I quantize it and then to make your uh, guitar sound more realistic you want to drag out some of these notes like to connect them kind of like this right here and like this right here this right here these notes are all like dragged over a little bit we're not dragged over but like you know what I'm saying well yeah dragged over you get the point um but yeah, so I did that and then I made all the velocities the same and I hit Alt R. And then like kind of randomized the velocities a little bit to make it sound more realistic. Um, This guitar, when I was playing it, it needed more reverb. So we're going to add a little bit more reverb right there. And then I'm going to show you guys this basic, super basic guitar melody and explain what, what's going on. So um, right here, we are on the minor one, but the major six, which is this first note. And it moves on, plays a couple different notes throughout the scale. And uh, I just did really basic stuff and basic bends. This first one, um, or right here, this second bend right here goes up. I'm just holding that pitch bend wheel up 
and it's just simple stuff sometimes you bend it a little bit sometimes you bend it fast you just gotta learn how to do it and listen to other producers and learn how to uh work with that pitch bend wheel and then on the effects i turned up the reverb like i said i didn't touch any eq or anything and then once you have your guitar melody recorded you did your pitch bends all that is real simple just mix it and turn it up so And just like that, you have your guitars. Like I said, this tutorial is going to be quick, real simple, real easy. Just have your EQ like this, you know. Don't You don't have to copy this exactly. I did something real quick just to show you guys what I do. You can obviously test different guitars, different effects, add guitar rig, you know, add flangers, add chorus. You can do whatever you want. But this is a very simple, basic guitar melody with a very simple loop. Like, it's just... Real simple stuff that I do all the time. And honestly, you can get more advanced by reversing your guitars too, like doing a certain swipe or not swipes, but like riser effects. You record one note, you reverse it, and then it you add a bunch of reverb and delay and then it leads on to your other melody. I've shown that in a couple different tutorials actually. So um I think that tutorial was how to make a rod wave vocal samples or whatever raw wave loops with vocal samples so I could check that out show you guys how I did that with the uh, reverse guitars but like I said it's pre pretty simple uh video pretty simple loop I'll actually show you guys how to make uh this loop real quick so I'm gonna show you guys how um I made the loop section of this or other than the guitar section of this so at a uh, escape I got this piano it's the uh LA Custom C7 hard and I turned the clear character on right there on the compression I turned the ratio all the way down I didn't mess with any other knobs my effects for that piano I have reverb EQ and delay right there Turned the delay down to like 2% EQ looks like that reverb looks like that and this is the piano shout out to uh, flex on the track he did this piano I did not record this piano he did the MIDI for this so this is what it sounds like So yeah, it's a nice little piano melody, um, real simple to be honest. He just added a bunch of top notes on after he recorded that or played that basic um, chord progression, which is like a pretty basic dark styled chord progression, dark slash paint style chord progression for Lil Dirk. So um, this pad, I use pill pillowy pad piano at a Omnisphere, turn the layers of the piano off. And on the effects, I got reverb, delay, another delay, and EQ right there. And this is the mix levels of all of those items, or not items, effects. And then I turn the time knob on the delay to the middle. I didn't touch any of the other knobs, so that's what that looks like. And this is the pad. And all I did was copy and paste the um, second half of the piano melody. Then in Analog Lab, I have this synth pad thing. It's a uh, synth, 80s iconic synth. I don't know if this is a custom bank or not, but um, yeah, that's, that's the bank right there. On the effects for it, I have EQ, reverb, and delay, just like that. So this is what it sounds like. And just copied and paste again. I have another another uh, analog lab pluck tears. Um, same person, I guess. Same designer. I don't know again if this is a custom bank, but I got out of analog lab. And this is the uh, effects I have on it. Pan man, turn the width up, smoothing up. Put the LFO in the middle, I guess, and then turn the 
right down the belt right there. Put a flanger on it. Delay, EQ, reverb, just like that. And then copied and pasted the melody. Then I have this bass line, uh, used Rickenbacker bass night session. This is, I only use like two basses, but this is the main one I use all the time. Scarby Rickenbacker bass night session preset. No effects on that, and this is what it sounds like, and this is what it looks like. Again, another tip actually is connecting these notes. Like, zoom in, connect the notes a little bit, like drag them out so it can sound more realistic. Then I bring the velocity velocities all to the same level and then I all are randomize the velocities and this is what the bass line sounds like. Pretty simple bass line. Um, just did a couple runs in between the notes. And right here is the vocals out of vocal runs too. Those are the presets right there. Um, major kit 77 and minor kit 04. So those are the vocals I use. On the effects, I use delay, another delay, EQ, reverb. Then turn the high end on the EQ down in the FL mixer equalizer. So right here, I have the walls out of expand. And that's the mod wall clean. And I have delay, reverb, chorus, EQ. And I'm telling you, I use the same effects on almost everything. Like I just use EQ, delay, reverb, and like chorus and flangers, but I use like stock uh, plugins except for my reverb and my, some of my delays. But I have this bell out of expand. And this is the woodpecker bell. This is what it sounds like. And I added reverb, two delays. And some people may ask, why do I use two delays? This Valhalla delay is kind of like the decay on the reverb. So it just adds more to it. Like it's just it's more dry of a decay knob, if that makes sense. And then this delay for the fruity delay is like a real time delay where it actually bounces on. And uh, this high end on the equalizer and the fruity mixer, I just turn that down a little bit. Right here, I have this ambient uh, sound effect. And then it just goes up an octave on the second note played. And then again, the guitar that I recorded earlier. And you can see right here, these little waves is basically what I'm doing with my pitch spin wheel. You can draw these in, but I definitely don't re recommend it. But um, if you do say say you mess up on a bend, but you, you like the way you played it, but you messed up on the bend and you know you can fix it, what you can do is go to control at the bottom, hit channel pitch, and then it shows you what you're playing on this uh, pitch bend right here. Like this is literally the pitch bend right there. The channel pitch is the pitch bend. So yeah, that's what you do right there uh, to fix that. You can like draw it in and stuff like that. But again, here's the finished loop. So yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video. If you guys like the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought about it. Let me know if you got any questions in my DM about any specific questions that you guys have. 
Uh, follow me on Instagram. Like I said, I will be dropping a free kit at uh, 6K. Well, I don't know if it's gonna be free kit. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I don't think it. It might be a free kit. I don't know yet. But um, I might do a free kit with a couple loops, and I might do a full version kit with more loops in there. Once I hit 6K on Instagram and then 2K on this uh, YouTube channel, make sure you guys hit up my other YouTube channel. I will start posting more beats on there. And that YouTube channel is Prod Space APV. But make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Um, let me know what you guys think. Like I said, this is a really simple guitar tutorial. Everything I do is simple. I just add a bunch of layers onto it. But um, yeah, if you guys want to cop my drum kit, hit my DM. Uh, this drum kit has everything in it. Um, if you guys want to cop some of contact banks, hit my DM. I got you with those. I do charge ten dollars a contact bank. My drum kit is fifty five dollars, and I have a smaller version for thirty dollars. And if you guys want my latest, like legit, what I have on my hard drive right now, if you guys want that uh drum kit with all my sounds in there that I use, that's gonna be a hundred and twenty dollars, and that's really a steal because that drum kit is worth at least two hundred dollars plus. So um. $120 for the kit I have right now. So hit my DM if you want that. I have loop kits on my Instagram page too, but I'm not trying to make this video too long. But if you guys liked it, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see. And um, yeah, I'm done with the video, so I'm out.